thanks for tuning in. My name is Michael Wynn. Welcome to this webinar on the year of the young water tiger and much more. Taoist cosmology, uh, inner alchemy, feng shui, qigong, all the energy arts that are tied into the cycles of nature. So let me just start off by saying that <clears throat> when I was younger, I was a total astrology skeptic. Um, I had my first Western astrology reading, maybe around the age of 25. <clears throat> and I thought, well, you know, that's interesting. Um, but the planets, the angles that seemed a little bit mental, abstract, very far away. And the advice was kind of general psychological self-help, which is, you know, I felt was kind of weak. <clears throat> I did learn some interesting things. You know, the guy looked at my chart. He goes, oh, Scorpio moon, Scorpio rising. Yeah, you're going to have intense sexual energy. Well, I already knew that. <laughs> I didn't need the chart to tell me that. But OK, that you know, gave me some type of explanation. But <clears throat> did you do about it? How to, handle it? How to manage that? It wasn't until I got into uh, Kundalini Yoga and Taoist uh, internal alchemy that I actually got the tools um, and developed what I call, you know, living astrology. Uh, which is not abstract. It's dealing with uh, in real relationships with the rest of the cosmos um, and particularly planets, star patterns, everything. So the date of this webinar, which is February 5th, 2022, is a triple tiger date, meaning <clears throat> the year of the tiger, 2022, starting the lunar one starts on February uh, 1, and the solar one started on February 4th. Chinese have both solar and lunar calendars. Um, it ends next January 23rd. It's the tiger month, February, and the fifth is a tiger day. So we get triple tiger. And I got up at <laughs> 4 a.m. to be doing some primordial Tai Chi ceremony for the tiger year. And that's the tiger hour. So I really, I captured quadruple tiger energy. So, and I'm wearing black, which is for the young water and green pants, <laughs> which is for the tiger, which is really mostly wood element. And the wood element is considered to be green and growth. So <clears throat> what accounts for the dramatic shift from the time I was 25 and the total skeptic to obviously, you know, picking uh, the date of this uh, webinar uh, for its astrological uh, auspiciousness and doing ceremonies and, you know, getting in touch with the whole cycle here. <clears throat> so. I had a lot of dramatic spiritual experiences that helped make that shift. At the age of 28, I had a very dramatic Kundalini awakening, totally accidental. Uh, it was like an atomic bomb going off a big mushroom cloud and my physical body dissolving and raining back down. Uh, so that let me know that this reality is multidimensional. And the physical body in the senses is not the hard reality that science wants us to believe it is. And once you experience that, you know, <laughs> that's just the truth. That's, that's your reality. So that became my reality. I started doing Kundalini Yoga. Uh, then at age uh, 30, about two years later, started experimenting with uh, Taoist uh, Qigong and internal alchemy. And Within three months of doing that, I had a visitation in broad daylight by a Taoist immortal who shot a 
beam of solid light into my navel center. By solid, I mean, boom, hit me. And this is in broad daylight. I was not <laughs> sleeping, dreaming, anything. This is totally real. And, uh, and then, of course, the immortal disappeared. I had no way of imagining this. I'd never even heard of Taoist Immortals at that point. So I had to figure it out. Well, anyway, that certainly kicked me on the path to exploring um, Taoist alchemy even more deeply. And uh, over the ensuing decades, <clears throat> I've hacked, we'll just say very deeply into the, uh, what was originally given to Montag Chia's uh, seven formulas of immortality. And I ended up writing, interestingly, synergistically, seven books from Antarctia. Um, and eventually, we had a friendly parting of the ways. Uh, you know, he was going very wide and big, big, you know, planetary operations all over to go deep, inside, deep, 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 deep. So um, that's been more my path. And to understand you know, what's the origin, you know, and I mean, let me simplify for this webinar here, the first hour, I want to answer three questions. Okay. One, what's the underlying belief system in astrology, Eastern and Western? You no, know, and are those different? Um, is it really a kind of religion where the planets are gods and goddesses, or is it, uh, you know, an energy science, you know, a spiritual science? Um, number two, how do you integrate year of the tiger, Chinese astrology, these natural cycles with internal meditation practices like, you know, inner alchemy, inner smile, with Taoist philosophy, with Chinese medicine, with movement practices, sacred movement practices like Qigong, yoga, Tai Chi, um, and with Feng Shui, which is really the science of directionology, influence of directions. So I think that's very important. So you don't just look at astrology like it's like this one thing by itself it's really um i'd say one tool a large toolkit of science energy science of transformation and then <clears throat> the third part uh questions is like you know what does it mean to have a young water year what is the implications of those elements we're going to get a lot into idea kidneys and sexuality and uh, what's the tiger? What's that mean? You know, how does that relate to you know anything? So we'll talk about tigers, and we'll look at the previous. I mean, Chinese calendar goes in sixty-year cycles. The previous Yang Water Tiger year was in nineteen sixty-two, and so we will take a look at that and see you know what happened then, and does it give us some idea of what might happen, you know, on a cyclical basis uh, in 2022. Okay. So let's get started. <clears throat> um, and by the way, I'm drinking, I have a collection of 40 Chinese teas, but I picked a year of the tiger, poor tea, just to celebrate today. So Back to the first question. What's the underlying belief system? How is the Western and Chinese astrology different in their belief systems? <clears throat> well, what's really important here is that the five elements in the East and in China are very different from the West. So the other Asian countries like Japan, Korea, you know, Vietnam, they've all borrowed from the Chinese. And the Chinese put the earth in the sky. 
in the west they've got ether it's like actually they only have four elements and then there's like some space where you know they don't even list the fifth element so what's the significance of this okay in western astrology you're looking at all the planets are up there in the sky and there's the sky zodiac 12 constant stars and you got planetary houses which are on the surface of the earth but they're not really they're imposed on the earth it's not that they're coming from the earth whereas in chinese astrology what's happening is that the chinese view the earth as the most important of all the planets okay so this is the planet we live on and so it has the greatest influence on us so uh, the implications are huge here because when you have, like, say, you're born in the year of the tiger, say someone's born this year, that's everybody for an entire year. So we're in a year-long cycle of the Earth, and it's 12 animal zodiac. And in the West, you've got a, a one-month window, one-month opening to be a Virgo or a Scorpio or, you know, whatever. And so that's a sky zodiac versus an earth zodiac. And the earth influence here is just not there in the Western astrology. And that's one of the reasons why I like the um, Chinese astrology because it's so grounded, okay? And really, it is best to view Chinese astrology as a uh, practice of embodiment. It's not out there in the, the planets and stars. It's about downloading that is energies through yin yang phases and five phases, the five elements uh, <clears throat> and the 12 animals that are all from the earth um, into your body. And, you know, that is how you complete your destiny. So it's really about your own physiology, your physical body and your energy body, which we'll talk about in terms of the meridians and the, each of the organs has got a, the 12 organs has got a, you know, its own meridian and there's deeper channels as well. So that's the, that's the biggest difference. Okay. Um, so Other differences are that um, I think that the Western astrology, and, and by the way, I, I, I'm not trying to put this, put Western astrology down. I'm basically just saying that it's different. Okay. I, um, I use both systems. I look at Western astrology for character types. It's archetypes. Um, it's a system from the West. And so that's really what it's oriented towards. And, uh, the Chinese astrology is more towards an energetic constitution. So, you know, you get different, they're, they're just different views of the same universe and give you different information. But we're going to talk about the cosmology underlying both of them and we'll see the similarities of the very notion of a zodiac. So where does this zodiac, is, the term zodiac is Greek, okay? And it actually means cycle of animals. So, <laughs> The Chinese 12 animals is actually closer to uh, the Greek term zodiac than Western astrology, which you know, tends to have uh, a, a lot more non-animals in it. It has some animals in it, but it has a lot that are not. So where does this number 12 come from? I mean, what's, what's going on with this? And, you know, of course, in ancient Greece, they had 12 gods and not Olympus. Okay and goddesses but if we go back to Taoism and in Chinese early early history um, the cosmology <clears throat> cosmology is just the story of how we got here like why and how are things evolving you know what's the story of creation ongoing you know and um, so Tao cosmology um, is actually one of the first monotheistic belief systems on the planet. The Shang Dynasty is 2500 BC and then it's 3500, I mean, 4500 years ago, okay? Uh, 
isn't uh, most high God, you know, 2,500 years before the Christians came along and started worshiping a God. Um, Lao Tzu in about 500 BC comes along and said, look, it's not really a God. There's no hierarchy. There's just this energy field. There's this chi field. And you can't even describe it or name it, but, you know, we can look at it. And he named it as a, the manifesting aspect of it was the mother of all things. So it was definitely feminine. And the Taoism is really a feminine path as opposed to all the, I call them the old boy religions of Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism. Those are all old boy religions. They're all sky religions. They're male dominant. They have their female aspects, but they're male dominant. Okay. And you see Western dragons have got wings. They fly down from the sky and the Chinese dragon spirals up from the earth or from the water, from the ocean. I mean, there's, <laughs> and, and there's zodiacs, or, you know, the Chinese zodiac should look at the 12 animals as basically the organ spirits of planet Earth. And they're going through their, uh, you know, their cycle. It takes, you know, 12 years for the Earth to go through the cycling of the 12 animals. So what you need to look at here is that the, human soul and human body mind has got 12 organ spirits and it's kind of like a microcosm of that it's an embodied zodiac we have inside of our bodies so really all of us have all 12 animals regardless of your chart okay your chart will emphasize that you know here's your needle chart and you've got a lot of monkey you got a lot of dragon you've got this you know dog or whatever it is but you have all 12 those are just the dominant ones those are you know, those are the big players okay and um, so what it really is about is that, is that you're looking at the interaction, uh, this kind of a download going on or an upload from the Earth's energy body into our personal energy body. Now, there's another level of this. You can look at the Western Zodiac as being kind of like a, another octave of this 12-ness. And, you know, they're looking at the planets and the stars and things, you know, and that's downloading in and, and that's also there. Because if you dig underneath these, these 12 fold patterns, you know, like what's driving astrology? You know, what are we really believing in here? Like, you know, where, where does it come from? I think it's very helpful to go to sacred geometry. Okay. So sacred geometry, there's a thing called the 12 kissing spheres. So there's really 13 spheres. This, the idea is that there's the original state of unity. Imagine that my fist here is a ball, okay? And everything, this is what some schools call non-dual. The Taoists say there's no polarity, there's no yin-yang. You know, this is the cosmic egg before it cracks open this original ball or pearl. And when it does crack open, what does it birth? Well, what you can, in sacred geometry, the 12 kissing spheres are that you can fit 12 spheres, exactly the same size as the original one, all around this. That will fit perfectly. And so when this origin, the cosmic being for multiplies itself out, it will multiply itself out into 12, okay? And because that's kind of like the microcosm of its, of its microcosm, macrocosm, um, or really it's a protocosm, it's the protocosmos, the original cosmos, and then it births the 12 as the macrocosmos, and then the 12 birth all the other levels, okay, of, uh, inside the earth and inside our bodies. And so it's all fractals of this process of what the Taoists describe as self-creation. And they don't see this original one as like some type of deity or God. It's just, again, it's just a unit field, okay? You can't even talk to it. It's so vast, impersonal. It's, it's not like this, hi God, you know, I uh, see so you're stroking your white beard there, you know, and, and uh, no. It's inside of everything, it's here all the time. 
And the whole thing about the Taoist cosmology that's different from all these other old boy religions, the old boy religion says you got to get off the planet eventually, you got to go back to heaven somewhere else. You got to leave here. Okay. And the Taoists are saying, no, this is just another heaven. And all those other, the higher heavens and this unity state are inside of us. And they're all present here at the same time, the same space. So the transcendent and the imminent, the manifest, occupy the same space at the same time. So what this means in terms of astrology is that, you know, when these cycles are happening and the tiger year is coming in, that's happening in your personal energy body automatically, in everybody's energy body. Okay. It's just, they're all nested. And so they're all happening. It's just a question of how conscious are you of it? And how do you respond to it? Now, the Chinese have got one of the oldest calendars in the world. There's a book called the Book of Calendars. And they say, you know, Chinese calendar goes back to like 4,000 BC. That's almost 6,000 years. Continuous time measurement. And the Chinese, if you messed up or, and, or made false writings about or anything, that was like capital punishment. This is sacred stuff. This is a job of the emperor to tell when you need to plant and all this other stuff. And it was like, so his astrologers are very important. Okay. And the Chinese, <clears throat> let me just say this the Chinese had very, very highly developed astronomers. At the time that, uh, let's just say, Ptolemy in Greece was like, you know, being, you know, talking about the stars and stuff, you know, they had identified, the Greeks had identified like 200 stars. I went to a uh, kind of a, we'll call it maybe a planetarium, a dome in Hohotu, which is in, now in Chinese Inner Mongolia. And on that dome, there were 13,000 stars mapped out from the sky. They had kind of telescopes, just a tube. No, they didn't have the magnifying glass, but they had the tube. They knew that the pole star, which looked like the pivot was not because it was actually a point in space. And that's why eventually they changed their, uh, <laughs> their astrology system to use the sun as the a stable point. That was like, you know, a thousand years ago. Uh, so the Chinese have very, very sophisticated sense, uh, a keen sense of observation, okay? Um, and again, it's practical. It's just like the Chinese invented, you know, palmistry. They looked at hundreds of years, thousands and thousands of palms to say, hey, this guy had this line and this is what happened to them. And this is what it means. And that spread out throughout the world. But that was all done through Chinese empirical observation. Now, first Chinese astrology teacher, I had to ask him once because he was like, seemed to know so many different methods. I said, how many methods of astrology are there in China? And well, how many do you know? He sat there and counted them. Oh, 18, that's how many he knew. Wow. That's actually one reason why the Chinese don't trust astrology as much as something simple like face reading. They say, oh, what's the proportion of the three parts of the face and you know the elements? Because it, that's very grounded. You can't change that. Whereas uh, astrology systems can be manipulated. But you know, nonetheless, compared to Western astrology, it's still much more grounded. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So I um, did have um, one of my wives who died in 2008, um, which is subject, one of my students wrote a book using her chart. It's called Under One Sky. And it was the first book to actually get 12 Western systems of astrology, give the blind birth data of my wife to them and say, you know, give us a reading. And then compare all 12 and they, she, my wife wrote up her story of her life with all the dates. So then everybody could look, it was like a first objective scientific experiment, not really about, astro about astrology. And she felt of the 12, four of them were just complete trash. It didn't <laughs> resonate with them at all. 
uh, four of them she thought were very accurate and had a lot, and four of them were you know mixed. So so. So uh, as we can see, I mean, uh, astrology is uh, I mean, that's just one example. It's not. a hard fixed experimental science that we can, you know, say it's definitively means this. There's a huge amount of interpretation and subjective, you know, um, experience involved here. But of course that's the nature of all life, okay? Um, <clears throat> the big difference, I think Western astrology has gotten divorced from its roots in Western alchemy. I think that uh, Chinese alchemy uh, internal alchemy is really a branch of internal alchemy. It's just like, you know, one of the tools of transforming yourself so that you can complete your highest destiny. And the, the key word here is, you know, understanding the influences that it's not fated. The stars, the planets um, are influences. And um, a lot of I think, not to say a lot, let's just say some astrologers, uh, particularly in the West, tend to be a little bit more predictive um, in their astrology, uh, rather than trying to just empower the person getting a reading and saying, well, you know, what would you do with this? And how would you, you know, reshape your life and recreate it, you know? Um, and, and again, there's so many different schools of astrology both in China and in the West, so it's very difficult to generalize. Now, I am not doing a kind of technical reading because you can't do a technical reading on for everybody because you need to have an individual chart. So just like we all have our unique DNA, our unique fingerprints, everybody has a unique constitution, their unique chart. Um, I recommend you go to my website and look at your Chinese chart, okay? After this is over, don't do it right now, just listen right now. But yeah, you just go to usa.com, Dao is spelled T-A-O, healingdaousa.com, and you go to products and you just sign Chinese astrology, the page will pop up, free Chinese astrology reading, put in your data, and it'll give you quite a bit of explanation about your chart, okay? But basically, what it's about is that there's a year, a month, a day, and an hour. And on the upper half of the chart, <clears throat> there's a, a five element influence like water or fire, or earth, metal. And in the lower half, there's an earth the influence, which is, you know, which will, at each column, the year has got an animal, the month has an animal, the day and the hour each have an animal. So you, everybody's got four animals in their chart. And they may have four different uh, heavenly uh, stems, they're called. These uh, fire, water, you know, the, uh, the five elements, yin and yang, it produces 10 heavenly stems. But it's five, five element theory combined with the 12 animals, and that produces a 60 year cycle. That's the Chinese calendar. So, uh, really, a, a Chinese astrology is about looking at, at the uh, you know, elements and um, looking at the relationship and um, their possible influence on you. Now, the, the important thing, as I mentioned before, you, already, you have all the other elements inside of you and you have all the other animals inside of you. These are just the dominant ones. These are the ones that are giving you the most definition when you're born. But that is, again, just your natal chart. Just as in the West, you've got all these progressions and you know your chart changes over time, the same thing happens in the Chinese chart, okay? You use your free will and you respond to life. And the key thing to understand is that there are two babies born at the same time and the same hospital, mothers are right next to each other. The charts will be identical for those two children, but their lives will turn out to be completely different. And why is that? the factor of free will, not just free will. That's the most important factor, how each one of those babies grows up to become children or adults responds to those elements within them, within their constitution. You have completely different responses. 
And then there's all kinds of family ancestral patterns, nationality, you know, culture influences, other karmic influences that are not showing there in the chart. So life is complex, much more complex than just your astrology chart. It's a useful tool. It can show you some important things. And I will talk later about you know, how I use it myself. Okay. But um, the thing to understand is that your free will is stronger, it is greater than the power of your chart. Your free will can direct the chi from each of those columns, the year, month, the day, and the hour, and create a, a completely different, you know, reality. Um, using those. And it's the same thing in a Western chart. Uh, you've got like a pie, 12 slices on it. And these, let's just say six of the houses there have got planets in them. Well, so six of them are empty. That just means you've got more free will to create whatever you want there. This is open space. And you've got some definition that's saying, look, these are the issues you're gonna to have to deal with. This is kind of personality traits, blah, 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 body traits, whatever. But these other ones are completely open. So you can just reinvent yourself from scratch there. There's nothing interfering or controlling those spaces. So it's the same thing in the Chinese chart too. Okay, you get the four columns and you get the animals and you get the elements, yeah, but you still got free will and you can pull in all the other elements. That's what alchemy teaches you, okay? And I'll talk later um, about practical ways and you know, things we can do, uh, how to do that, okay? So we're, gonna, we're spending the first hour just going over the general theory, of cosmology, the integration of all these things and you know what the year or the tiger, uh, young water tiger year is about. Uh, and then we'll take a break. We'll have 30 minutes of practical ad advice that I'll be giving you in Qigong forms and herbs and other things. And then we'll do 30 minutes of questions and answers and you know issues like that. So a discussion. So let's go back to uh, looking deeper at the cosmology here, okay? And to understand the relationship of ourselves to heaven and earth, because that's in the Chinese chart. You have the upper half of the chart is heaven, the, the 10 heavenly stems, and the lower is the 12 animals, also known as the 12 terrestrial branches. But in Tao cosmology, if we go to the Tao Te Ching, verse 42, which is the kind of the defining metaphysic behind all Dallas cosmology and there are many Dallas cosmologies okay many variations verse 42 the Tao gives birth to the one so the Tao is like unknowable it's sometimes called the Wuji the supreme mystery it gives birth to the one to unity okay that's like the cosmic egg I was talking about that cracks open to, to the 12 right but before you get, to get from the one to the 12 how do you get there the one gives birth to the two. That means the non-duality, the, the neutral energy inside that original uh, egg polarizes itself into two. And then the two gives birth to the three. What does that mean? Well, the Tao I believe is that meant you have, I'll have the integration of the yin, the yang, and the yuan, which is the uh, original neutral force positive, negative, neutral. And those three are also equated with heaven, earth, and humanity. So <clears throat> elsewhere in the Tao Te Ching, it says, you know, Tao gives birth to heaven and earth, heaven and earth give birth to humanity. So we are the, the, the child of heaven and earth. So when we say that we have these influences from the planets and from the stars or from heaven, the formless realm, and we get these influences from the earth, the physical realm, They copulate, heaven and earth copulate, and they give birth to us. So we're half animal and we're half divine. 
that's what makes us different from all the other animals. So our awareness of our divinity and our mind can go to the farges of the cosmos. But it really means like as a child of heaven and earth, we mediate between heaven and earth. That's our spiritual job. So when you do spiritual work on yourself, on your chart, on resolving the issues that you're given, you are working on behalf of the whole. You're creating a higher level of harmony. And the whole, like just take the name of, the, of Lao Tzu's text, okay, which is like, you know, again, to, about 2,500 years old, Tao De Jing. Tao is the way, the natural way. De and Jing. Jing means scripture. The De, spelled T-E, but pronounced D-E, De, Tao De Jing. The De means your inner power, means your free will. It can also be translated as a mandate from heaven that empowers you as a human. So that's what, in fact, gives you a soul mission and the power to accomplish your soul mission. Soul is a religious term. The Taoists have a term called the Ling, which means the inner heart essence. I think it's roughly equivalent, but the simplest way to understand it is I call it the energy body. Your soul is your energy body. It has many layers, physical, mental, emotional, sexual, intuitive, spiritual, and they're all pulsing and interacting. The chi is flowing through them, various patterns in them. And they download into our physical body and you know, into our life here. But the important thing that are subtle bodies is that they're actually inside of us. They're not out there in space. Okay, they're inside of us. All the planets, the stars, all that, that's just a mirroring. The source is inside of us. Okay, and our job actually is to gather the influences from the macrocosmos, the outer nature, and use it to awaken and cultivate and expand our inner space and you know and connect back to source the return bring back in a resolved transformed way our soul which originally came out of that primal egg and has some mandate or some mission to accomplish so if we can come back to source say hey mission's accomplished then there's a complete cycle that's happened Okay, of completion. And so, from my point of view, life is not about happiness. It's not about gain and loss. It's not about solving suffering. It's about completion. Our soul arrives here with some mission to complete, and we each have to find out what that is. Your chart will not tell you what that is. It'll give you some, hey, I've got to resolve some things here. I've got this strong element, this one, I've got that but it's not gonna give you the whole picture. You have to integrate it with your free will and decide, I'm gonna try another, it doesn't feel right, I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna go this way. Now, this relationship, this career, you have to experiment and find out and you co-create your, your destiny, your highest worldly destiny with all the planets, all the earth elements, the animal, <laughs> everything together. Those are really your allies. You have to call them in, okay? Um, and ask them to support your 12 organ spirits and your energy body and the channels and meridians in it. And, you know, so this is what's important is that we humans have free will. And this is a free will universe. And the Taoist thing is that everybody's got to follow their own way. If you follow some group, some religion, you know, some mental philosophy and this and that. You can get some learnings, this meant, but ultimately you're gonna have to take those, create your own cosmology, your own story, create your own destiny. There's no group out there that can complete your destiny for you. So that's the important thing to understand about astrology as well. It's just it's just one tool out of many. Okay. So the philosophy, I mean basically I put the Tao cosmology at the top. <clears throat> The science, energy science of transformation is below that. Uh, inner alchemy is like the highest level of that. And that term, inner alchemy, sometimes makes people confused or scared, like what the hell's going on, what is that? It's very simple. It's just about the science of transformation of the yin, the yang, and the neutral force, positive, negative, neutral. And the idea is that 
creation is all of these yin yang patterns and you just keep multiplying out and it's extremely complex you know you go from the one to the many and many is just thousands and millions of yin yang patterns and so what the alchemists do is they start coupling them first within your personal energy body male and female and then within the earth and then within the solar system's energy body then the galactic energy body and as you couple the yin and yang positive and negative you build up your neutral force. And the neutral force connects you more clearly back to source. Because the original egg is all neutral before it polarized out. So it's really very simple. You're just trying to increase your percentage of neutral. Sometimes it's psychologically that's called getting detachment or spiritual wisdom. But the Chinese have a kind of very concrete energetic science. I've repackaged that you know, for the Westerners to call it a loving energy science because coming out of that source is pure love. And I'm not speaking out of theory here. I had the experience on spring equinox. I'm sure it was no accident. Um, in 2010, of completely merging into the ocean of uh, original chi, of the, the mother of all things, this great ocean of neutral you know, energy. And so that has not left me. It's still something growing inside of me. Okay. Um, and that's the main focus of my work is like, you know, let's use all these tools and get people to grow their neutral force. And that's what alleviates suffering and gives real happiness <laughs> and resolves the battle between good and evil. You know, you, you have to buffer it with this more neutral force and lubricate things. So it's very simple in our alchemy. And there are many tools and astrology is one of those tools. Qi Kong is one of those tools. Philosophy is a mental body tool. It's great. Okay. Just be able to have clear thinking. Um, Chinese medicine is another tool. Okay. Acupuncture, herbs, massage. Um, those are all ways of adjusting your energetic field, you know, so that you can better accomplish your highest worldly destiny. And you have to start off by harmonizing yin and yang before you can build up the third force. So, you know, there's, there's a, a natural progression there. So that's, and feng shui, again, directionology. It's another thing, you know, that's a tool, okay? And you can't make any one of them too important. You have to see, you know, that what they're just, what are they being used for? And, um, your diet, nutrition, five elements, nutrition. That's another tool. Okay. <laughs> it's not religion. Okay. It's some, some to, food is religion. No, it's another way of balancing yin and yang five elements. Okay. So, um, I want to look now at some of the other, uh, issues in the past. Okay. And, and talk about the, tiger and the young water year and so the tiger itself is a very amazing impressive animal it's like um like whales and like elephants it emits an infrasound this tiger's roar uh, part of it's audible, but part of it's below 20. Uh, and so you, you can only feel it. And it actually hits before the, you hear the sound. And so it actually starts to paralyze their prey or anybody listening to it. They get hit by this low decibel, you know, infrasound thing. So this tiger's got huge earth power to vibrate the earth like that. <clears throat> the tiger in Asia is much more it's considered to be the king of the jungle, not the lion. Okay. I mean, they obviously share certain qualities, but it's a, it's a tiger. And in their sky map, they have, you know, a white tiger and, you know, a green dragon, and they don't have a lion up there. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a, a, the five heraldic animals and the dragon in the center. Okay. So uh, the tiger. is, uh, and, and I'll just say, you know, I, I take groups to China and we go up to Chinese Siberia <clears throat> and they have this tiger park there. The humans are in the cages 
and the animals are wild running out and you know, get some fences behind them, but they're basically free on the landscape. And you pay to have them put a chicken in it. And they reel it out there on a wire about 12 feet high over towards near a tree. And you watch these Siberian tigers. They see that chicken, right? Live chicken. Incredible. Watch them spring. Leap up the side of that tree, 12, 15 feet high. Grab that chicken up. Take it down and gobble it up. Feathers flying all over the place. But their power to spring, bound, that is the characteristic of the tiger year. And if anybody's got tiger in any one of the four columns, the year, the month, the day, or the hour, they've got some of that tiger influence in them. And so tigers are, are famous for their being independent, being leaders, sometimes being impulsive and doing what seems to be crazy, but that falls on it and they can make things happen. And tigers are sometimes considered to be you know, even though they're like a sign of protection against evil, like in China, the, you often see kids with tigers on their shoes or hats. The parents, you know, they want to protect their kids from disease and stuff like that. And so, yes, tiger would be a protective amulet against COVID, for example. Okay. So, but they're sometimes nervous about them because they're not sure how dependable they're going to be changeable. And so they can be like drama queens or drama kings, okay? <laughs> the tiger, people have a lot of tiger in their chart. And interestingly, um, uh, so this is a good year to make changes because that's what tigers do. They can suddenly, they're prowling to the jungle and say, hey, that's what I want. I want to go over there. I want to get that. And they've got the power to make it happen. So change a job, change a relationship. <sighs> change spiritual path, change where you live. This is a good year to do that. Okay. This is a very good year to do that for everybody. You don't have to be born in the year of the tiger. In fact, the people born in the year of the tiger are cautioned. This can be the tiger year, born in the year of tiger or have a lot of tiger in some other part of your chart. This can bring up the shadow side aspects of the tiger, okay? And so if you've got a strong tiger influencing your chart, then you need to be careful because it can be stressful. There's too much tiger energy and you can make bad or rash decisions. And so the advice generally amongst astrologers is like tiger people should be very, very cautious and kind of lay low this year. Don't take big financial risks. Don't, don't go gambling. Um, it's okay for others, <clears throat> particularly the allies of the tiger, which is the horse and uh, dog, I think it is, yeah. Um, so they'll benefit, the horse and dog particularly, if you got horse and dog in your chart, they'll also, you'll get a, a, a stronger dose of tiger energy than others. But uh, as you'll, as we'll see later, you know, everybody can cultivate this, this tiger energy this year. You can grab it. It's there. Okay. For a whole year, for the whole planet, all 8 billion souls on the planet are living in that tiger energy. Okay. And so it suggests that there could be some greater volatility. Um, now let's look at the uh, historical on this the last young water tiger year was 1962. What happened then? You know, did this kind of, and, and by the, uh, we're going to talk a little more about the water element, which is connected to creativity. And uh, well, actually the, the, the wood element, the tiger is mostly wood. And so it's connected a lot to what's considered to be the liver, which is the hoon spirit. And very much the kind of the general that, starts new projects and executes on things. So the tiger is a very creative element and the water element is sexual. It bursts new things. It's volatile, it's a powerful force, okay? 
So the water element itself, okay, is very, very, it's the queen of the five elements. Okay. <clears throat> when the original force, a neutral force comes into the body through the Ming Min, the gate of destiny, which is kind of in between, it's considered to be the moving chi between the two kidneys, which is the water element. The kidneys are water element. So the chi comes in there and it's the water element, the kidneys that polarize it and grow and create and shape the rest of the body. So our body is mostly water, 78% water, the blood and all the interstitial fluids and everything else, just like the body of the planet. Okay, they say it's like 75, 78% water. Okay, it's a water planet. Uh, there's so much life, it's so fertile, so many life forms. Okay, and so much water support birthing of, you know, of, of so many different uh, you know, beings and creatures and species. Billions of them. Okay, so, and that force can sometimes be destructive in storms. And sometimes it's uh, very, I mean, it brings abundance. All the cities on the, on, on the world, the major cities are on the ocean or on rivers because that's where transport and trade happens. And so the water element, look at Manhattan, it's got two rivers running around it, financial center. So water brings abundance. This is a good year for, to grow your abundance, okay? Good year to start new businesses, to start new projects. Um, again, you know, this is, you've got to literally grab the tiger by the balls. That's a male tiger. Um, and in fact, I want to mention that the last tiger year, which is 2010, that was a metal tiger. I went to Thailand to a tiger farm. And again, for a small fee, you go inside a room instead of a cage, a room with a with a tiger. And his tamer is there and he's got a little stick. And the tiger is stretched on the table and he says, you can massage that tiger. Well, I was sitting here massaging literally the testicles of this tiger. And he's going, oh, well, oh, yeah. He's, I went, wow. You know, like how often do you get to massage the testicles of a tiger in real life? Okay. I think I got some mojo from that because it, like a month later came back and met I've been looking for several years my life had died in 2008 this is 2010 and next month met the woman who I ended up marrying okay now the tiger year often initiates things we didn't actually really hook up and, until the rabbit year that follows, okay? And I'm born in the year of the rabbit. But the spark, the connection was made then, okay? And, you know, I was looking for a woman who wanted to consciously conceive a child. And she was 25 years old, never thought of having a child. And suddenly she hears his voice, says, you're going to have a child with that guy. <laughs> but I have to think that this tiger energy had something to do with it, okay? Okay, because... My previous wife, the one who died in 2008, we also decided to get married in a tight, you know, planned the wedding and, and, and then actually started to execute it on in, in, in a rabbit year. Okay. So I've seen this pattern happen in my own life. Okay. Now I'm actually back in that pattern again. That marriage did not work out. The great separation. She was 25 years old when I met her and she just didn't know herself and ancestral issues and, you know, just a different destiny but she needed to complete herself. So I'm now getting the same message from my inner sage saying, time for you to have another child. It's the greatest gift you can give the planet, okay? Some of you may have read the Taoist poetry written by my son Emerald, who's now just turned eight. So I didn't really need another kid, but like I'm sort of surrendered to the larger forces. And when my inner sage tells me, but the interesting thing is like, he said, well, we'll just wait a couple of years. He started telling me this two years ago. Now I see, oh, a couple of years is the year of the tiger. This is the time to start to put that out. This is this supportive energy for finding a new partner. So this is, water element is good for money, is good for romance, okay? And those are the two main uses of astrology that people are looking for, okay? So I'm just mentioning this, you know, how this has worked out in my own personal life. 
Um, but yeah, I'm figuring the same thing's going to happen, I'm chasing it now, but someone's going to wake up and go, hey, I'm hearing his voices and I'm supposed to have a kid with this guy. <laughs> and it'll happen during the year of the tiger. That's what I think. So anyway, let's talk about the last year of the tiger, young water tiger, okay, in 1962. So there was amazing creativity and amazing volatility. Okay, just like you would expect from a tiger. Okay. The Beatles got their first recording contract, 1962. The Rolling Stones, they gave their first concert in London, 1962. First James Bond film came out, 1962. Navy SEALs first organized, 1962. Those are the ultimate water tigers. I mean, you're <laughs> naval and in the water, and they're like, you know, you know. Uh, sort of, you know, uh, secret silent attackers, you know, and that's, that's their, they're, they're the king of that jungle. Um, JFK announced to the world, you know, we're going to put a man in the moon. That was in 1962. The majority of the public didn't believe him. He said, oh, uh, that's like tiger, you're thinking big. Okay. That's, that's an attribute of tigers. Think big, do big. He put that up in 62. Uh, it has a lot to do with communication. Uh, they had the first transatlantic television broadcast. Okay, they, John Glenn, they had the first astronauts circling in space, you know, just around the Earth. It's in high orbit, whatever, low, maybe in orbit, whatever. Uh, so they also had the Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay, this is like <laughs> the huge flashpoint. Okay. Uh, but that involved a naval blockade around Cuba. We had, you know, stopped the Soviets from delivering missiles there. Okay. Well, of course, don't go by what you read in the press. Okay. Because the Soviets did that because we put missiles in Italy and Turkey, pointing at the Soviet Union. They were just like, you know, okay, tit for tat, let's like, you know. So that led to positive developments of international arms agreements. Okay. But again, this is all year of the tiger, okay? So how's that gonna play out this year? I don't know, we're moving from a bipolar world to a multipolar world. Asia's coming in stronger. You know, the power is shifting. There's possible conflicts in Ukraine. Again, it's all manipulated, okay? You know, all the anti-Russian propaganda. I mean, it's, uh, you just, I used to be a journalist, just don't believe the press, okay? The mass media is owned by six corporations and they're all just puppets, okay? All those new news broadcasters are puppets. They're just reading a script. They don't know what the hell is going on, okay? You gotta be on the ground to see what's going on, okay? I've been to 110 countries. I, I learned the hard way, you know, like what's really going on, okay? The mass media is not telling the truth most of the time. They're telling part of the truth. They're putting a slant on it, okay? So the same thing has been happening with COVID, okay? Mass media, big four. Now here's the thing about a water year. You can manifest romance, manifest abundance, financial abundance, if you're not frozen in fear. The shadow side of water is if that water freezes up, then you don't get the abundance. You don't take the risk, you're just frozen shut. So that's been the trip for the last two years. Fear, 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 fear creating a false story about germ theory, about this deadly virus. When in fact, of course, in Chinese medicine and in quantum physics, everything is run by fields and it's not one little particle. And so this is, you know, all coming finally to a head. And I think in the next year, we're gonna see in this tiger year, huge pushback against lockdowns and loss of freedom and constitutional rights, every civil liberties, everything. You see these 4,000 truckers in Ottawa, Canada, and they're gonna, you're going to see this. It's already been happening in Europe to push back. It's going to start spreading everywhere. You're the tiger. It's just people are just going to, they've been, you know, kind of started everything. And this is, a, by the way, a 12-year cycle started in 2020. And I looked at it then. I, said, I predicted. I said, okay, this is like, we have to have a clean out. 
and the metal element, the rat. Yeah, it's the beginning of the new, new uh, 12 animals uh, cycle of the zodiac as metal is cleaning out the lungs. Okay, so that's all that's happening. And what's it about? What's the big picture? The big picture is the planet is rebirthing itself. It is a, a whole new energy body. I will say, actually, say this the planet energetically has already rebirthed itself, but the physical body of the planet just like our physical body, is the slowest one to change. It's the last one to actually implement. So we're in the process now of the planet having to go through all these contortions and all this stuff and see all the dark side stuff and the greed and the manipulation and the fear stuff. And that's so you can choose something different. Some people will go with that and they'll stay in contraction. And some people are going to know, I want beyond that. I want to go back to natural immunity, natural health, I'm not going to be able to live myself from vaccine to vaccine. And, you know, I don't want to be the guinea pig and experimenting on. And so, you know, <clears throat> it's all good. It's just process. <laughs> okay. So don't hold anybody or anything in judgment. Um, just empower yourself as much as possible. Okay. And that's what we're going to deal with when we come back from a, from a break here. And we'll uh, talk more about some uh, Qigong forms uh, you can do and some practical things. Okay. I know where I turned this thing off. There. Yeah. 